A Connecticut lawyer wants to sue the state over the Sandy Hook school shooting. Irving Pinsky wants $100 million in damages on behalf of his client, who was a little girl who survived the shooting. Pinsky says the six-year-old was left with emotional and psychological trauma because the state failed to provide a safe setting and failed to require the school to make an emergency response plan. I'm saying for a fact that the state didn't do enough to provide their, for their safety. The state of Connecticut and other states, too, are failing to protect the children from guns. The whole thing came in over the intercom, down to the screaming and the cursing and the, and the bang, bang, bang. And her friends are dead. And that's trauma. Again, a 20-year-old Adam Lanza killed 20 children and uh, seven adults there before, and killed his mother before he took the gun uh, on himself as well. Let's talk about this, because we knew that lawsuits most likely would be coming out of this. So joining us right now is Brian Silber. He's a defense attorney and a former prosecutor. And uh, Brian, thank you so much for being with us. Good to see you today. I heard, you, I heard this $100 million figure, and I thought... You know, we're not, as I said, we're not surprised that there would probably be some lawsuits, but $100 million for a, a child that survived. Now, we can't put a price on anybody's life. There's no doubt about that. No, nobody, I think, would argue it. But when you heard $100 million, what did you think? Well, quite frankly, this lawsuit is going nowhere. And the reason is, it can't be won. You know, at the end of the day, before a lawyer takes on a client's case, after he's done or she's done the full evaluation of the facts, the law, they got to pause for a second and do a gut check. And you have to ask yourself, how will this case be received? How will a jury interpret it? How will a judge interpret it? How will the public interpret it? And quite frankly, when I hear about this lawsuit, $100 million for a survivor of all people, I think a jury is going to look at this and think it's more about profiteering and less about justice. And that's why I think the lawsuit cannot be won. Yeah, now, I want to just kind of point out their claim here. They're claiming that the State Board of Education, the Department of Education, and Education Commissioner failed to take appropriate steps to protect children from foreseeable harm. Is there anything about this crime do you think that was foreseeable? I mean, a lot of people might be looking at this thinking, what else could the school have done besides having armed guards on duty all the time? Well, quite, fr quite frankly, I completely disagree with this attorney. This is not a case of foreseeable harm. There is absolutely no way that this school could have predicted that some psychopath, someone with a major mental health problem, was going to arm himself with an assault weapon, gain entry to the school through a window, if I'm not mistaken, and shoot up the school. You know, when we're talking about foreseeable harm, we're talking about reasonableness. What would a reasonable person look at and think that, okay, someone might get hurt? For example, what if they built a playground next to a railroad or next to railroad tracks? You could foresee that young children could get injured. This is not a case of foreseeable harm, even though we may have to address safety in our schools. Is there any hole that you see in the way this school board had planned um, or, or had safety procedures in place? Is there any hole in any of that that you see lawsuits might come forth? Well, frankly, you know, they're going to have to do an investigation. And as a society, we're going to have to ask ourselves, what level of security and what level of protection are we comfortable with and do we want in our schools? When it comes to this particular school, I doubt they've done anything any different than any other school has in our country. But the thing to keep in mind is, you know, despite, you know, the questions about this particular lawsuit, you know, litigation is what drives social change in our country. You know, think Brown versus Board of Education. How did we get our schools desegregated? Well, a guy named Oliver Brown filed a lawsuit on behalf of his daughter. You know, litigation and lawsuits do a lot of positive things in our society. Mm -hmm. But insofar as this particular school board is concerned, I don't think they did anything different from any other school board. Okay. This is a society level question. Hey, Brian, we only have a couple minutes left, but I wanted to get this in or a couple seconds left. Uh, in this, this claim, they say as a consequence, you know, the child, the six year old they're talking about, has sustained emotional, psychological trauma and injury, the nature and extent of which are yet to be determined. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt that. You know, all of those kids sustained something like that, that families who lost their children and their, their loved ones there are going through something similar. Does somebody have to pay for that part of this, do you think? 
This is exactly why I think a jury will not receive this case positively. You know, it's true, emotional trauma is a real thing. I'm sure a lot of the surviving children are going to suffer with PTSD, nightmares, you know, a lot of emotional problems that will require extensive counseling and treatment. But quite frankly, when you have a mass of other children that were killed, it pales in comparison. And to file this lawsuit and ask for $100 million and to be the first person to do it, that's where they're going to lose a jury, and that's why this case is not going to win. Mm, all righty. Uh, Brian Silver, thank you so much, Brian, for being with us and sharing thank your you expertise with us. We appreciate your insight.